What's going on guys? Welcome to the video. So it is Monday morning. I'm just getting ready for team training right now. Uh, I'm gonna make some breakfast and head out in like an hour or so. Team came back yesterday from California and they brought back three points with them. So uh, it was an amazing game. Here's some highlights from the game. Now Jones can run at defenders. Get around one towards that byline. Jones with a low service in. The flick at the near post. And it did it matriculate its way over the line. It did. Here's Darwin Jones in the final minute. The opening 45. Opportunity on here for Orange County. The lofted service is towards Ramos Godoy. He can try to take a touch. Goes down. And the referee has pointed to the spot. After getting the 91st minute equalizer a week ago against Reno, here is Aiden Quinn. Sends the keeper the wrong way and makes it 2-0 in favor of Orange County. And the Jaqua trying to get Ramos Godoy turned. Instead, it will fall here. And the strike towards goal appears for handball, and it's given as a penalty. A second penalty decision awarded by Alejandro Aguilera just before halftime, and a yellow card as well for Walker Hume. And now Tulsa can get their way back into it right before the break. Who himself will try and make it two from two. Here is the Honduran from the spot. Well taken right down the middle. There is that kind of ball that you're looking for. Is that soccer there from Lopez? Now Hume is going to have to chase it. And Mike John Silva take advantage. He does. Looking out to Milano deliver. It's a decent ball. The header comes in. A great save. And on the follow, Tulsa Roughnecks have taken the lead. Roughnecks points in Irvine. Lofted in towards the edge of that six yard area. It's Lobo again! And that is Braden Cloutier's last throw of the dice. I should say that a year ago, Tulsa Roughnecks did not win a single match away. And might they get a fifth year? Opportunity on, and there's five! A year ago, in 17 tries, they've got five tonight, and what a calm finish that is from Bastidas. Orange County. 2-0 up at the end of the first half from the penalty spot as Ramos Godoy can try and hit one last consolation goal. What a consolation goal it is. Giovanni Ramos Godoy will be pleased watching the highlight of that one, but it ultimately... Yeah, I think both teams, both teams have squandered some good goal-scoring chances in this game. It's been a great game to watch for the, for the neutral, but... Tulsa League winners. Honestly, such an amazing result for us. I mean, down 2-0 on the road in the first half to come back and make it 5-3, to three, win the game, bring back three points. Amazing. I didn't travel this weekend or play in the game because last weekend against Portland Timbers 2, my groin uh, just got pretty tight, pretty sore after that, and I'm trying to do the smart thing over the long term, trying to be professional about this. And, and even though it's just so tough because every fiber in your body wants to go and play and push through the pain and just play, you have to be smart about the long term. So yeah, this weekend was tough. It's always hard watching your teammates compete without you playing a game um, while you're thousands of miles away, but seeing them win definitely made it a lot better, a lot easier to watch. I'm headed out to training right now, but when I get back, I'm gonna talk about a time in my life where I was actually in a really similar situation as to this last weekend, but I didn't handle it the right way. And uh, I honestly, I was very selfish and looking back on it, I regret it a lot.
So anyway, back like what I said, going back to the time where I thought I was selfish, if we look at the type of player I was in college, I think that I was a great teammate. You know, I did everything right. I worked really hard. I was really nice to my teammates. I pushed my teammates to play harder. They pushed me to go harder. Just everything that, you know, a normal teammate does. And because of that work ethic that I had and just the fact that I was a decent soccer player, I was rewarded. I played in every single game of my college career. Um, so on the surface, I look like a great teammate, but um, there were a few games where I didn't start. And the games that I didn't start, I truly felt like I should have started. And this happens to every single player in the world. They feel like they should start, they feel like they should get more playing time, um, and just, it's a coaching decision. And back in college, you know, I, I would get frustrated, angry about it, and I really do think that's perfectly fine as a player. I think that you should have that inner drive inside of you to really get frustrated and all this stuff and almost pissed off when you're not playing I mean that's the whole point of the game is to get on the field however I took that that passion inside that fuel you know the fuel that should get you to work harder and train harder and play harder and it, it affected me in a negative way and I became a, a bad teammate inside like outside it was still you know rooting for the team doing everything but inside when I would watch the games and I would be on the bench I truly wanted the team to not perform as well when I wasn't in the game. I truly almost wanted them to lose, to be 100% honest. Uh, uh, that's what was going through my head when I was on the bench. I was so frustrated, it tipped over that point of just fueling you to work harder and play harder and play better. It tipped over to the point of, now I want my team to do bad because I'm not in the game. And what you feel deep down in your gut doesn't truly affect the performance of the game, I really don't think. I mean, if you, inside want your team to lose i don't think that just because you're thinking that in your head it's going to affect the performance of your team the players on the field unless you show that in an outwardly way and really just kind of bring down the vibe of your team with like your negative attitude but i wasn't doing that it was just more of in my head i was just kind of hoping you know the striker would miss that shot or i was hoping the team just wouldn't perform as well so the coach is like man i made a mistake i should put matt in instead i should have just been focused about the team doing well you know i was too young and too naive to understand that the most important thing in your career whether you go up to the next level whether you can continue to perform and continue to to develop as a player is is the success of your team to be 100 percent honest and i didn't really understand that at that age between 18 and 21. At that age, I was just so focused on individual accolades. I was so focused on just my performance. I was so focused on how I was gonna to get to the next level, how I was gonna play semi-pro, how I was gonna play pro, that I couldn't see that the success of the team directly affected my success. If I would have realized that if that team was successful and that team made it to the NCAA tournament and that team made it, it even won the NCAA tournament, Everything else would have taken care of itself. The individual accolades would have taken care of itself. The goals would have taken care of itself. The scouts and the agents and the invites into the combine and getting drafted, everything would have taken care of itself. Because a good player on the most successful team is going to have a much easier time getting a contract, getting a pay increase, being more successful than a great player on a losing team or unsuccessful team. And that's just the reality of the sport, no matter how fair or unfair that is. I've personally seen very high level and high caliber professional soccer players struggle to find a contract the next season just because their team didn't perform well in the last season. And in the exact opposite sense, I've seen much, much lower caliber players get contracts thrown at them, pay increases, and just find a whole bunch more success just because their team was successful that last season. It honestly is just the reality of how soccer works. If your team's successful, there's more attention on the team, and even the lower players on that team will find more success than sometimes the very good players on the bottom teams. Now, it's not always the case, but generally speaking, that's what happens. You know, as I've grown in college, as I've, I've experienced more, as I've played on multiple teams in multiple countries and kind of grown as a professional soccer player, I've really learned how wrong that train of thought was as a college player. And I think it was in the most contrast this weekend when I watched Tulsa play Orange County and I just felt my gut and everything inside of me rooting for Tulsa to succeed and to do well, every single player on the field. When we went down 2-0, I just felt this huge pit in my stomach, almost anger and frustration watching the game. And then when we tied things up or pushed ahead and took the lead, I just felt you know euphoria. It's just wanting your team to do well. And I think, you know, that was the exact opposite of what happened when I was a college player. 
if the team would win and team would succeed why I wasn't on the field, I felt the exact opposite. I felt the pit in my stomach. And when the team wouldn't be doing that well, when I was on the bench, I honestly felt a little happy. And so it's just funny as I've grown as a professional soccer player and grown as an athlete and just grown as a person, how different those two feelings are now when I watch my team play. So I honestly just kind of wanted to share that experience when I was watching you know, the game. I, I just remembered back to college and how opposite I was thinking. Um, and just how much I've grown. And I'm not saying like, oh yeah, I'm a great person now. I'm just, I almost want you guys to learn from my mistakes because I'm sure there's many of you who are in a situation right now where you're benched or you're injured or you're whatever. And you might be wanting your team not to do as well when you're on the field. And just, you know, take it from me. Learn from my mistakes um, that you'll regret it. I really truly believe that if the team does well, everyone benefits on that team. And, I, I, and again, it's okay to feel the frustration and the anger if you're benched. It's okay to be angry. I think that's a good fuel for you to work harder and prove as a player and earn back the spot. Um, just don't let it turn into something destructive for your team, you know, rooting against your team. Um, so now in complete contrast, we're going completely goofy now. Uh, I got a new mattress. So uh, how about that segue? So here's a clip from like a week ago of the new mattress that sent to us. So far, I've been absolutely loving it. Thank you, M. Lily. Um, for sending that to me and Mimi, to Mimi and I. Uh, yeah, here's the here's some of that footage. So we just got this in the mail and bring this up, but this is a mattress from M. Lilly. Um, they are actually the global partner of Manchester United, which is kind of cool. I mean, they outfit a lot of the players, a lot of the organization with the same exact mattress. This is the Serene Elite mattress, king size bed. Um, and looking just on the website and the quality of the mattress and the price compared to a lot of the other mattresses that I've ever slept on in my life, this is gonna be by far the best. Um, for example, the mattress that we're on right now, if you wanna see it, it's like a four inch foam mattress pad from Amazon. Not the highest of quality mattresses, but it does its job, it works. Um, so it's gonna be, real. I mean, literally this is like the bottom of the line mattress to the top of the line mattress between these two. So uh, I'm gonna just give my honest opinions about it. I'm guessing that this is gonna be a big positive difference, but uh, yeah, let's open this up. And I think it probably takes a couple minutes, or not a couple minutes, a couple hours, like even a full day or two, to really start to like rise up and be all ready. So uh, I'm gonna get a knife and open this. Always cut towards yourself. I don't trust you with oh. that. It really puffed up fast. The foam mattress took like an hour before you could even see a difference. I haven't even got this out of the bag yet, and it's already expanded like 10 times. Walking on the surface of your mattress can speed the process. You are supposed to walk on it. Really? You want a ventilated area, so let's go out the window. Later. <laughs> All right, this is the first. Oh, wow. I want to be spoiled now. We gotta put like a nice cover over it so it doesn't mess up. I ordered one, it's coming tomorrow. Oh my God, this is amazing. Wait, let me go, let me go back to the old mattress. Old mattress? Wow. <laughs> so I'll be on this one and then you'll be on this one. There's a, there's a reason why this one probably costs about 20 times the amount. Wow. Okay, try it out. We just turned off the camera, but right, maybe it was lying on it. She's like, it's really like cold. It's cold, right? Like it's cool. Mm -hmm. And they have, I don't know how it works, but they have like temperature regulating technology in here. So it's like temperature controlled. And it's, it's, I wish you could feel it. And I'm not just like BSing, oh yeah, I think it feels cool. No, like it's literally cool to the touch. And you know like that feeling right when you, it's a cold night, you switch over your pillow and the cool side of it, that's how it always feels. Even if you're close, it's really nice. But yeah, so it has like temperature regulating technology. Um, the memory foam is bamboo charcoal memory foam, which I guess is like top of the line type stuff. And uh, we also should be getting a pillow here. So this is a Serene Elite mattress and the pillow is the Harmony pillow. The same type of uh, memory foam is in here, is in the, in the pillow as well. It molds to your body. It's, it's cool. 
I've never had a mattress this nice in my life. So I'm gonna let this breathe and ventilate. Um, but Emily, thank you so much for sending this mattress our way. I can't wait to get the Harmony Pillow as well. A little disclaimer for you guys, I'm not being paid at all. Like I'm received no money for this at all. So this is my honest thoughts and opinions about this mattress compared to this mattress. Wow, just stepping on the two. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Anyway guys, that's about it for the video. Rehab life is pretty slow and uneventful. You do your workouts that are not very exciting as you saw. You wait, you lie down a lot, you wait some more, you really eat the right things and you just keep on keeping on, take it day by day. And um, just hopefully you continue to see improvement every single day, every single week. So that's gonna be it for the video. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you learned something from, uh, from myself as a college player. Uh, you know, just open up, kind of really share something that was true something that I really do regret in my career and uh, hope you guys learn from it. So if you did, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. All right, guys, peace.